So glad to be here with you for Divine Savior Church's midweek Lent devotional. My name is Kevin Boshek. I serve as the pastor on our Siena campus outside of Houston. Grateful to be with you here this evening. We'll begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Right now, while you're watching this video, I'm on a trip. The eighth grade students of our academy on our campus, they have the opportunity to go on a destination discovery trip every year in the spring. For them, it's a couple days of backpacking, kind of self-introspection, discovering themselves, backpacking. This year, they're going to Colorado Bend State Park. And I have the lucky privilege to be a chaperone. And a little nervous. <laughs> I'm wondering if I'm going to survive this trip. And no, not because I'm going to be spending a couple days with that very interesting and unique subset of the human species known as an eighth grade student. No offense if any of you are one of those. I love you to death. But no, that's not what has me worried. What has me worried is it's a backpacking trip. Everything that we need has to fit in a backpack. And then we're gonna hike, and we're gonna try to hike over 20 miles over the course of these couple of days. And I just don't know if I'm gonna survive that. Like, everything we are gonna take it has to fit in this bag. So I did pack some things though, so that maybe I will survive. Of course, a water bottle. Just gotta stay hydrated so I don't shrivel up and get dehydrated, okay? And some uh, high protein packed granola bars that'll give me some energy to keep me going, put one foot right in front of the other. But the biggest thing that I'm worried about, no coffee. I don't know how I'm gonna survive that, but chocolate covered espresso beans, maybe those will help me out. And maybe I can survive this trip. I hope you understand that I'm being over dramatic about this whole thing. I really am excited about this trip, but I wonder if you ever feel that way about your life. Do you ever wonder, am I gonna survive? Whatever's coming next in this struggle that we've talked about over the last couple of weeks, can I really survive it? Whether it's the mounting pressure as work as it keeps pounding and pounding, you just don't know if you can take it anymore. Whether it's how you sense that Satan is trying to rip apart your family because of politics or because your eighth grade student is going through that process of, of maturation into adulthood. Or maybe you're just too tired to be a parent anymore. And what can you pack? What can you take along with you every day that's going to refresh and energize and give you strength? Today, as we turn to one of the ancient songs of God's Old Testament people, a song written by David, we're given encouragement. If you'd like to follow along, it's Psalm 19. You know, one of the things that I am excited about and uh, that for this trip is that it's going to give me an opportunity to be in God's beautiful creation and to see the wonders that God has made. You know, separated from the ambient light of suburbia, we're gonna be able to look into the night sky and see the shining stars and all their glory. Every day we're gonna wake and we're gonna walk to the rising warmth as the sun comes up and, and the sunlight cascades down upon the earth. And as David starts his psalm, he talks to us about the incredible power that's found in God's creation. He says this, he says, The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day they pour forth speech. Night after night they reveal knowledge. They have no speech. They use no words. No sound is heard from them. Yet their voice goes out into all the earth. Their words to the ends of the world. In the heavens God has pitched a tent for the sun. It is like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, like a champion rejoicing to run his course. It rises at one end of the heavens and makes its circuit to the other. Nothing is deprived of its warmth. 
Do you ever think about the sun that way? These amazing words that David uses to describe it like this champion going forth to run its course. I mean, it's amazing. The sun is so constant, so faithful. Every day, God provides it to give warmth and light to this world and to sustain life. It really is like that champion rejoicing to run its course. It's an amazing display of God's impressive power. But that power doesn't really help us, doesn't really sustain us for the emotional and the spiritual struggles that we go through. Which is why I believe that David really uses that to transition to another faithful, constant power of our God. The power of God's word. David writes this, he says, The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The decrees of the Lord are firm, and all of them are righteous. David talks about the powerful word of God. He reminds us that this powerful word of God, it refreshes, it restores us, it gives us rest to energize us for each and every day. What an incredible blessing we have in the word of God as it empowers us for the struggles that we face. As David celebrates that word of God, he also celebrates the value that it has. As I prepared to pack that backpack, everything I needed for this trip needed to fit inside that pack. There was no extra space. There was no room for things that weren't valuable to survival. No, there were some things that I had to say no to because they would just be wasted space. They would just be dead weight that would burden me. And so I had to push them aside. Push them aside for what was more valuable and what was more important. Have you pushed aside the things that you need to push aside? Or are there some things that you are holding on to that are dead weight? Just a burden on your heart and soul because they're taking the place of the Word of God. What is truly valuable, what can truly bring joy to your life. Don't hold on to that sin or the, those desires that consume the valuable space that could be filled by God's Word. Hold on to what is more important and more valuable. David goes on to tell us the value that God's word has. He says, speaking of God's word and God's laws and commands, he says, they are more precious than gold, than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from the honeycomb. By them your servant is warned. In keeping them there is great reward. But who can discern their own errors? Forgive my hidden faults. Keep your servant also from willful sins. May they not rule over me. Then I will be blameless, innocent of great transgression. My friends, these words are so true. We must come before our God and we must confess our hidden faults for which God's powerful word declares forgiveness. We must come before our God and confess our willful sins, for which God's powerful word declares forgiveness. He has declared us blameless and innocent of great transgression because of our Savior, Jesus Christ, our rock and our redeemer. Because Jesus also went on a journey. He hiked up a hill and he carried not a pack, but a cross. He carried the weight of the world's sin and disobedience. He carried it there to die there to forgive us of all of our sins. 
And when the sun, the champion, refused to run its course and shine, when darkness descended, it was Jesus, our Savior, who became our light. That radiant light bursting forth into the darkness of our lives. It was Jesus, our Savior, who became our champion through his sacrificial death on the cross. And it's God's word that declares us innocent, forgiven in Christ. May we always draw near to that powerful word of God that strengthens us for our struggle. May we draw near and pray the prayer that David ends his psalm with. May these words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Let's join together to pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we ask that you would fill our hearts and lives with your valuable word. That you would allow that word to empower us each and every day to refresh and energize us for what lies ahead of us. That even as we come against the struggles that may be there in our life, that through faith in your son Jesus, through the gifts that you have given to us, through the restoring of our hearts, we may live those lives to your glory and to your praise alone. Remind us of the incredible light that you have given to us in your word and help us to seek it out each and every day with all our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We conclude today's devotion with the singing of a hymn that reminds us a prayer to God that he would renew us each and every day. Please join us singing the hymn. Following the hymn, there will be discussion questions that you can use to think about this meditation and this psalm and speak with those that you're gathering with. God's blessings on your week. my heart